The question is, what is your opinion on using burlap, linen, monk's cloth, or rug warp for backing? What are your preferences to use one over the other? Thank you. Well, thanks, Lynn, for the question. And what's interesting is I am working on, um, and I've got it almost edited. I still have to do the voiceover on it. Um, I've got a video that's going into the beginner rug cooking course all about backings. It tells you everything inside and out. But it sounded like what you were asking is when would I use each backing? Well, burlap, I'm discovering, tends to rot in about 20 years. 20 years isn't nearly long enough for the amount of time we put in. Maybe if you're making pins for a hook-in or something along that line, um, I would pretty much personally, I would never use burlap. It just doesn't have the longevity. And when I did the research on the internet, it runs about $16 a yard for Scottish burlap, which is a better burlap, but it's still burlap. It's still made out of the exact same plant. Um, it'll still rot at the exact same time. And there's nothing that can change that. So burlap, let's cross that off, mark it off the table. Next up in pricing is monk's cloth. Uh, monk's cloth tends to be the backing that most people get exposed to, uh, mainly because it's cheap and it's included in a lot of kits. So the downside with monk's cloth is it's very stretchy and it's very limp. It is cotton, which is good. Next up on the price scale, and Monk's class running, I think it was when I looked, I think it was 18 a yard. Monk's cloth was 18 a yard. So then going up in the price scale would be rug warp. Rug warp is my personal go-to backing. It's the one I prefer over any of the others for a myriad of reasons. It stays nice and dimensionally square. It doesn't stretch. It's very heavy when it's on the ground. You're not having to smooth out the wrinkles. Okay, I don't think I should have to smooth out wrinkles in a rug. Um, so I like rug work from that point of view. Um, it also holds the loops really tight. So if you have animals, there's less maintenance on the rugs because the loops just don't pull out. Oh, what else can I say? It sticks to the grippers really good. You can draw a straight line in it, the easiest than any other of the backings. And it's only $20 a yard. So we're looking at musk cloth at 18, and then we're looking at burlap at 16. For the difference in price, rug warp becomes a no brainer. So then it becomes the next contender in price is linen. Now, linen, you can pay anywhere from about $30 a yard to almost 40. Um, and there's a widespread there mainly because there's a lot of different linens out there and they all have different levels of quality that you may or may not be aware of when you're buying them. There's primitive linen, there's fine cut linen, there's bleached or unbleached, there's hairless, there's, it, the list goes on and on and on. The problem I have personally with linen is it doesn't stick to my grippers. I want my backing to stick to the grippers and stay nice and tight. Now, the argument for linen has always been it's the best lint, it's the best backing. Well, it's certainly the most expensive. But is it the most expensive because it's harder to harvest and not as common as cotton? I did some research on that, and what I found is that the linen fibers are stronger, but they decompose slightly faster than cotton. So at least the way I'm looking at it, it's pretty much a tie. Um, and all this, the scientific papers I read, they were, it was all negligible. There really wasn't, you know, a real reason. And granted, most of the testing and most of the data was coming from the linen and the cotton that painters use to stretch on canvases. That's where the real conversation is coming from. And the linen is just more expensive. And a lot of the painters were preferring linen because of the way the brush strokes like worked. So if you prefer linen because of the way it feels to bring up the loops, then that's your choice. I would try both and decide which one would work. The only time I would use monk's cloth, 
um, when I was first started in rug cooking, I made a vest. Um, part of it was so that when I went to the Goodwill, I could just open my coat and go, this is rug cooking. I thought it was very clever. It was also like 20 below every day that winter. So it was so cold and having wool around me sounded like a good idea. My backing was rug warp. My cut size was an eight because that's the only cut size I had at the time. It's basically a vest that when I sit down, it does not. It's, <laughs> it's like armor. But if I were to do that again, I would make, I would use monk's cloth as the backing because it's very limp and it's more like clothing. Um, the only other time I use monk's cloth is Tish Murphy does these uh, just adorable little tiny pins that are portraits. And they're very minute and very detailed. And I do like monk's cloth for that. Um, we end up sort of erasing the limp qualities of the rug work because when you make a pin, you put backings behind it and you make it stiff anyways. So the only thing, and it really doesn't matter if it stretches. What I'm looking for is just all those little tiny holes to be pulling up the little tiny threads. But for wide cuts on Monk's Cloth, uh, I, I shudder to think how many new rug cookers we lose because their first backing was rug warp. 